Well, stroke it remains the third leading cause of death in the United States. And uh, many people don't know that it's the most important cause of disability in adults in the United States. We have outstanding treatments for stroke, particularly developed in the last 10 years or so. But far and away, the most effective way to treat stroke is to prevent it happening in the first place. We've got ways to do that in terms of medicines, as, as everyone knows. But we also have procedures that can be done to prevent strokes. The carotid artery is the artery that goes up on either side of our necks to supply the right and the left side of the brain. And the carotid arteries can become blocked totally, or more commonly, plaque can develop, and pieces of the plaque with blood clot can break off and go up into the brain. When they do so, they block the blood flow to a particular part of the brain where they're lodged, and that causes a stroke, death to those brain cells that control that part of our function, which may be speech, may be movement, may be walking, may be vision. You know, the functions of the brain that we depend on every day. In the CREST trial, we look at those procedures, surgery on the plaque, or stenting of the plaque with kind of a cage-like device, which opens up the artery and allows flow to go up to the brain. The operation, which we call carotid endarterectomy, has been around for a long time. Actually, the first procedure was done in the early 1950s. It's tried and true. It does the trick. Whether or not you have warning signs for a stroke or there are no warning signs for a stroke, it's safe and effective. Carotid stenting is the new procedure that's less invasive. There's no general anesthesia. It takes less time for the interventionalist to perform. And we need to find out, is it tried and true uh, in 2010? The CREST trial was designed to compare carotid surgery to carotid stenting. Both at the beginning, which procedure is more safe, and over a longer period of time, up to four years, does the result of the procedure or the surgery last in terms of preventing stroke? To do a comparison of an operation and a stent procedure, you need to have balanced groups. And so this is why we do a randomized trial in which patients are essentially picked at chance to be in one group or the other. That way, you have similar numbers of older people, younger people, people who may be smokers, people who may be diabetic, people who may be taking a statin drug. So it's balanced in the two groups so you can rely on the results. When you don't have a large number of strokes coming from a plaque, you need to compare more people with the two procedures to see which is best. So in the CREST trial, we had to enroll 2,500 patients, assigning half to stenting and half to surgery so that we can compare the results of the two trials. The way we compare carotid stenting to carotid surgery is to look at that safety, which is the occurrence of a stroke during that procedural period, or a heart attack or myocardial infarction during that time period, or rarely death during the time of the procedure. That's the safety element. Then we look beyond the safety out to as long as four years to see the occurrence of stroke downstream from the area that was either operated upon or stented. That was completed in July of 2009. And after a year went by from the last procedure, we then were able to break the code and look at the results. This way, the investigators, people such as myself, a neurologist, we don't know the results ahead of time so that we can't bias the results of the trial. The results have been very encouraging to us. First, the results of the comparison of stenting to surgery showed that both procedures are, in fact, very safe. In fact, the safety that we recorded is the best reported to this time for these two procedures. Second, both procedures were effective with regard to a very low occurrence of stroke after the procedure had been carried out. In fact, when we compared all of those endpoints or comparison criteria that I mentioned, stroke, death, heart attack during the procedural period, 
and stroke on the same side of the op artery that was fixed afterward, the two procedures came out just about equal. The difference between them was not what we call statistically significant. The overall similarity in the results comparing carotid stenting to carotid surgery were actually driven by differences. Differences in that there were more strokes following stenting and more heart attacks or myocardial infarctions following surgery. Those differences canceled each other out with regard to the significance, so the overall safety was about the same. What are the implications of the CREST study? Well, first, surgery or stenting, they're both effective procedures with regard to preventing stroke. Second, advances in anesthesia, patient selection, the medicines we use, certainly are helping to make both procedures increasingly effective as the years go by and should make both procedures more effective in the years to come. For the individual patient, it appears that right now, stenting is a little bit safer with regard to the occurrence of heart attack, and surgery is safer with regard to the occurrence of stroke at the time the procedures are carried out. What's the impact of these two? Well, we did look at a year, um, a year after the procedure. What affected the quality of life more? A stroke that occurred during this procedural time or a heart attack that occurred during the procedural time? Those measures of quality of life showed that the effects of stroke were greater than the effects of heart attack. We also learned that there is a relationship of age to the comparative safety and effectiveness of these two procedures. We expected that for older patients, the less invasive procedure of stenting would be superior to surgery, but we found out that actually the opposite's true, that after the age of 70, the older the patient, the better the advantage of surgery. Conversely, the younger the patient, under the age of 70, there was a slight edge favoring stenting. This is one reason why you need to do clinical trials such as CREST, because you're not always certain what you'll find. And in fact, if you knew the answers, you wouldn't need to do the trial.